Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. I'm Whitney. I'm David. And I don't know why I keep sticking my finger in the air. Today we're going to talk about the handheld penetrometer. No, we're not. We're going to talk about uh, ASTMC 1709. Yes. And I really want to focus on what is the difficult part to understand about the significance of the specification that you're getting and the difference between the 618, the fly ash specifications mm -hmm. that we see in the 1709. So really go through the five stages right. and why the 1709, at least in my opinion, is better than the current specifications, the 618, the 1240, the 980. I, I like the 1709 because it... Oh, we got to define it first. Okay, go ahead. Please. By all means. No, no, no. Please. It's an evaluation. A guide. It's a guide for an evaluation. It's not a, a specific li list of tests that you have to do. I mean, there are tests that you have to do, but you have a lot more flexibility in... Wait, wait, wait. It's a specification, or it's a guide for an evaluation for an alternative supplementary, supplementary cementitious material. material. And that, after your product goes through that evaluation, mm -hmm. that is what your product will be called. It won't be called a type N, a type F, a silica fume, a slag, a type C ash. Right. It will be called an ASCM. And the reason why it was created was to answer the demand of other materials that were coming into the market, which really weren't fly ashes, right. they really weren't slags, but they were still helping out the industry, making right. concrete stronger and last longer. Okay. I think that's right. At the ASTM meetings, we're seeing that there's more and more products coming through right. that improve concrete in some way, and in many cases, they improve the environment. We've got recycled products coming through right. the ASTM committees that, so I think there was a demand in the industry to bring forward a, a window for these other sure. materials. Well, yeah, because some just don't fit in that box right. for the 494 exactly. as an admixture and additive. So, Well, or as a supplementary cementitious right. material. Like One of the things that we look at is what pozzolanic purity or soluble alkali content or loss on ignition or, or, right. or particle size. Sure. And while there might be right out of the specification for a type N or a type C or 1240, that doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad thing. And engineers... Here we go. <laughs> true or false though? No, 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 this is important. You need those ASTMs to know that there is a repeatable method to evaluate the back of the suit can. Right. That being said though, even these repeatable methods, the 618, Flyish, they're they're repeating these method, methods, they're meeting the spec, but the swings in what you're getting and the product that is allowed per the specification. I mean, it's I, I Dang. I'm, I'm blown away that that meets the spec. We'll disagree. Yeah, I mean, we when it comes down the shoe, we have to know what it's going to do 20 years later. Well, you have to know what it's going to do to your fresh and hardened properties in the beginning too, and and with some of these fly ashes, you you don't. Well. One of the things that I like about the 1709 is these different stages. Do you mind yeah. going into the stages? Oh, sure, sure. So the first stage is an analysis on just the raw material, kind of particle size distribution, those sorts of things. Right. Stage two is a little bit more of that, but it's also a grout um, evaluation in the lab. CMC 109, yep, C109, strength yep. activity. Yep. Um, and then you move on to stage three, which is even more in-depth material characterization, but then you're moving on to your concrete laboratory mixes. And there's a set of mixes that you have to do, or a set of tests, but then you have so much flexibility in how you want to evaluate your long-term durability, and I love that about it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, the 494 has got this list of tests you have to do, whether it's relevant or not for your specific admixture, and that's not the case with the 1709. So... And what Whitney's talking about is, you know, a lot of people have a tendency of complaining about the ASTMs without actually reading them. Sure. And diving into these, be nice. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> I think that whoever wrote this, bravo. Right. Well done on this one. Because this, I mean, in plain English, this is not lawyer speak, David. No. This is real, sorry. No, you're fine. This, it, is, this is real industry, know. like contractors. Like, it's it's applicable. It's not... Not here to, whether for, behind well, the exploratory negative. Well, I mean, sometimes they're, sometimes they're highly academic, and they just don't make a lot of sense. That's freaking academic. Well, and I, I don't have any issues with them, but it's like people that have worked in the field versus people who have just done research for the sake of research... 
I mean, they speak two totally different languages, right. and this, I feel like, is is meant for the field. And moving on, I mean, so there's stage four, which is doing um, C618, right. and you're doing your kind of QAQC Or the 989 tech, or the 1240. Or the, right, whichever one's applicable. But then there's a final step, which is stage five, and that you're actually doing commercial trials right. and evaluation for that. A year plus. So again, I mean, it's very much looking at the application of it, long-term durability in the lab, in the field. So I feel like you're getting a much more comprehensive look of what it's actually going to do. Right. Um, and, and I think it's building up a lot of confidence too. So once the evaluation is done or coming close to done, architects, engineers, specifiers can be a lot more confident in using it because they've seen what it can do in the field. Yeah. Is there a pass-fail at each stage if you're something happens in stage two that you don't continue on, or how does that work? I think that actually is part of all R&D, right. that part of that stage one, stage two is going through that refining process. And you internally should not, because you have to be transparent about all the data, that's right. why they right. list out those five stages. So you have to be transparent about that data, you're not going to want to show poor data. So it's if you have an alternative supplementary cementitious material, I love that name. Right. Great acronym too, ASCM. Say that five times right. fast. Um, you can't go on to the next stage until you're meeting that strength activity index or those other things that warrant you to move on. Now, right. if you look at fly ashes at seven and sometimes 28 day strength activity index, you're only at 75% of the control, meaning right. you're weaker. Right. But what you could do for ASR sulfate attack is so much more important than losing a little bit of strength. Yeah. So, I mean, you have that in there, but like Whitney said, there's, I, I, can I read this part again? Sure. I read this before, I really love that. An ASCM that demonstrates good performance through a comprehensive evaluation as outlined in this guide could then be considered to have access to broader markets and could be considered for inclusion in an ASTM standard for SCM. So even you, if you can't check every box, to me that's what it means. As long as you've got the performance, you're good. That's my understanding. No, I think that's right. I mean, and from the ASTM viewpoint, I think the key word is performance. Right. Because but that's what it should be about. You know, we move. They, I think the ASTM in general wants to move away from prescriptive specifications and move to performance-based standards. So I think the uh, 1709 sort of represents that. Absolutely. And I want to be the devil's advocate. We talked about the handheld penetrometer before. <laughs> no, we did. We did, and we recognized that when when coming out with these new wireless maturity devices or any new technology, there's a tendency to forget what we were used to. And, you know, there was this drive back in 2008, 2009 time for this 1157 general use cements or these performance-based cements instead of prescriptive. I, I, I have a, a, this opinion that our industry, when it does make a change, sometimes it, this pendulum swings so extreme in the right. opposite direction right. that we also don't, oftentimes don't have time to adjust and things go awkwardly wrong. And sure. while I think it's a great idea that we move to performance, I think it just should be that. A slow, um, I mean, I know a lot of what we do is a sprint to the finish, but this should be a slow, methodic movement. Right. Just like the movement that we made from 6 by 12 inch cylinders to 4 by 8. Right. That's another story. That's another story. <laughs> okay. So I think, we, uh, I think we dove into it. Thank you very much. A great explanation on... Where to use the handheld penetrometer? No, that's not true. Um, let us know if you have any questions, any concrete concerns. Throw them in the con uh, comments Below. section, and we'll make sure to include all of the links for the 1709 and the 618 Pichuli below. Patchouli loves that. Thanks, Patchouli. <laughs> oh, I'm John. I'm Whitney. I'm David. Go concrete. Beat asshole. asshole.